and sort of seeing the, the impact they can make on both ends in crunch time and how that measures up with what you've experienced so far through your uh, career. I mean, obviously, those are the two most or two of the most versatile uh, defenders and, and just players in this game um, that this game is seen. So, um, basically, trying to you know find where you fit, <laughs> make sure you get out the way when it's time to get out the way, uh, but also be ready when it's time to be ready. And um, you know, they're two amazing players, and they, and they can uh, they can definitely make the game easier for everybody on both ends of the court. Any way you can compare what it's like getting a road win, especially stacking road win, you know, in this year, as compared to what it was like even last year before the pandemic? Uh, I, I guess this is more of a playoff type feel, where you know you're obviously you're seeing the same team over and over. Um, there's going to be adjustments that are made. There's a familiarity, you know. Um, you you kind of it's a psychological game as much as it is a physical game, where you know you got to get up to play the same team. Um, as opposed to, you know, different looks and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, but it's the same kind of road warrior mentality that, you know, we got to go in and, and uh, we got to fight. Um, regardless, we're, we're obviously going to have a target on our backs. Um, but uh, that's where that's where I think, in my opinion, teams are really formed, which is, you know, their play on the road. Hey, Wes. Um, you know, I'm sure you're aware that uh, today in Wisconsin, um, attorney announced that there's not going to be any charges filed in the shooting of Jacob Blake. Um, kind of given everything that you went through with the Bucks, um, the NBA went through. Um, what, what do you make of that result? Um, no, uh, nothing that isn't going to be censored. Um, it's disheartening. Um, Truly, it's, it's, it's disheartening just for all the work that, that everybody put in. Um, all the, you know, just the heartache of, of, of the families involved, you know, the kids involved in the car, the city that rallied around it, the community. The, I mean, it's, it's just about right and wrong. I mean, and, and but, you know, this isn't going to be something that it can't deter, you know, those those citizens who, who are trying to do right who are trying to fight for equality, who are trying to fight for the right things. You know, it can't deter us. It can't make everybody, um, we can't lose our heads. We can't start rioting. We can't start, I mean, we have to be calculated. We have to continue to keep our foot on the pedal. We have to continue to keep our foot on the gas. And I mean, this just furthers, you know, we, we, we can vote and, and, and do all those things, you know, with the with the president, but at the same time, we have to make sure that, that we protect our state and, and, and vote in state and understand that what is going on is real. This isn't made up. This isn't a lie. This isn't fabricated. This is, this is lives. These are lives right here. And um, you know, it's upsetting as a Wisconsinite. It's upsetting as a human being. You know, that uh, justice is injustice, and um, it's uh, it's it's tough. But uh, it can't. It can't. It can't knock us off the path that we're trying to get to, which is equality and just simply right and wrong. Just humanity. That's all it is. And walking. Wes, um, along those lines, I mean, you obviously have the, the disappointment and the heartache from something like that. And it comes on the same day where you're seeing tremendous turnout in a runoff election um, after a lot of discussion by NBA players, including LeBron, your teammate, about voting. I'm just kind of curious, where is the state of activism in the NBA right now? I mean, obviously, there are going to be some wins and some losses. Um, do, do you feel like, even though the, the, the Blake decision wasn't what you guys wanted, that um, people are listening and that you guys are making a difference? Well, we have to continue to, and it, and it can't just be us. I mean, every, everything that we did um, in the bubble as the NBA, you know, not only just the Milwaukee Bucks, but in, in the state of Wisconsin, but everybody globally, nationally, um, that really rallied. And, you know, that just has to continue to, to – the flame is already lit. It just has to continue to keep burning and keep burning, but burning the right way, not where – um, anything can be sidetracked, not that we're damaging anything so that all the media attention can go to, oh, well, look what's happening over here. No, look at the facts, look at what's going on, and then let's address the issues head on. And that's how, um, 
you know, we, we have to attack this. I, I'm, I feel, I feel awful for, for Jacob Blake and his family. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we just we have to keep our foot on the gas, and that's what we did. That's what that's why we did what we did. You know, to to create awareness and, and to create, you know, um, a coalition amongst the NBA, so that when things like this happen, that uh, that families and people are supported. So you know, it's our job to 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 play basketball, but it's also our job to make sure that that our communities are are aware of what's going on in them. Uh, Mark McGinnon. Wesley, I hope you're hanging in there, all things considered. To follow up on uh, the things that you're just talking about now, what are your expectations moving forward of how you hope the Social Justice Coalition responds to this and you know, puts any more additional pressure on local leaders to make any other changes? Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure, I, I'm very confident that, that Mark Lazary and, and the Milwaukee Bucks are doing are doing their diligence right now, especially with it happening in their own backyard. I'm, I'm very confident in that. Um, and I mean, that's just, that's, that's, it really is just tough. <laughs> you know, it's almost, it, it's, it really is disheartening, but you know, leaders have to be leaders and everybody has to take ownership for their own community. You know, it can't just be those that have the platform. It's gotta be everybody. Um, and uh, I think we saw what impact that that those with the platform can do and we saw even more impact what those without a platform can do when everybody does it together when everybody does it with the mission when everybody does it with the right with, with their heart forward and um it's all we can continue to ask for it's all we can continue to strive for and fight for and that's what's going to continue to happen last question melissa Hey Wes, did you guys as a team discuss the Jacob Blake case before the game tonight? And, and if so, what was sort of said in the locker room? I think it, it got sprinkled around. Um, you know, I, I don't. There wasn't a formal um, discussion about it. Um, I didn't find out until I, I woke up from a nap. Um, truthfully, I didn't find out till like four, four something in the afternoon. I guess it had, had that decision that happened in the morning. Um, so. I think a lot of people just are kind of internalizing it. Um, I know myself, I was internalizing it and just, just how, you know, you, you go through all those things, but at the same time, you can't be discouraged. You know, as, as, as visually upset as you guys can see me right now and hear my voice, you know, we can't be discouragement. You know, we can't take our foot off the gas. We can't think that all of our efforts are for nothing because they are, you know, we've got to keep continuing to wake up people. We've got to con continue to, to kick doors down the right way. Um, and, uh, and, and strive and push and demand change and demand equality and demand respect and demand humi humility. And, um, you know, that's, that's my message to everybody is, is uh, don't let this have you hang your head and be like, oh, it's broken, it's never gonna get fixed. No, we, we gotta fix it.